This episode of the HE Tips Cast is sponsored by Text Help. Boost reading, writing, and learning confidence with Text Help. Text Help is a world leading specialist in assistive technology and literacy support software. They believe that literacy skills are every student's passport to academic, social, and professional success. They create smart, friendly software supports that enable young people to read and write with confidence. Read and Write is their award winning software designed to support struggling readers and writers. English language learners, and students with learning disabilities by providing an easy-to-use toolbar that helps with reading, writing, research, and more virtually everywhere. Read and Write is available on Windows, Macs, and is a Chrome extension, and on both iPad and Android tablets. To find out more, visit texthelp.com slash readwrite. Need to make more time for reading? With Fluency Tutor for Google, you can do just that. This time-saving, leveled reading and assessment tool helps busy teachers bring struggling readers up to speed. Teachers can share an unlimited number of reading passages with students, then listen to, score, and provide feedback on their recordings. Try it for free at FluencyTutorForGoogle.com. To find out more about TextHelp and their award-winning software solutions for educators and students, visit TextHelp.com or call 1-888-248-0652. That number again is 1-888-248-0652. There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? The dark side. And the light. Hello and welcome to the AT Tips Cast, where we explore free or nearly free tools and strategies that can be used to help all learners here in this galaxy and in those far, far away. I'm your host, Chris Bouguet. This is episode 150, Yahoo! recorded on February 9th, 2016. There has been an awakening in the use of technology in the education of students with disabilities, and I've got a great feeling about this. Like so many others, every member of my family is crazy for Star Wars. We were lucky enough to obtain tickets to opening night to The Force Awakens. It was a fun, fantastic spectacle to be a part of. We all love talking about our favorite moments, discussing theories of what's yet to come, and just generally geeking out at what made the experience so memorable for each of us. After the initial fanboy excitement was out of the way, I started to draw parallels to points in the movie and working in contemporary education, with a specific emphasis on working with students with disabilities. This episode may contain spoilers for the movie, so if you're still hiding out in the swamps of Dagobah, trying to avoid any ounce of information before you see it, be warned. Help you again? Yes? Mm. Like the title explains, the overarching backdrop of the movie is that there is a war between two factions, the First Order and the Resistance. The evil First Order fight for control and domination over others, leading by might and demanding compliance. The enforcement branch of the First Order are the stormtroopers, who are indoctrinated from a young age to serve. Although some troopers are trained to use different weapons, every trooper is apparently the same race, wears similar looking armor, and follows the same set of rules. Brought up to comply with orders, stormtroopers don't think for themselves. They do what they are told to do. The leadership of the First Order, in a way, are like educators who assign one activity and expect every student to participate in that assigned activity the exact same way without question. You must all do this worksheet assigned by me or else. You must all memorize this information and spit it back to me on the test or else. The end result is a group of students who might be good at doing what they are told, but not so good at solving problems on their own. The force opposing the First Order is the Resistance. In contrast, the Resistance celebrates diversity over uniformity. In scenes featuring the Resistance, we see different races, genders and ages working together to address a common problem. The differences between the characters are present, but also transparent because everyone works collaboratively, seamlessly, without major callouts to show off that diversity. It's just there, working in the background, without trumpets or fanfare. It illustrates a heterogeneous society working harmoniously. Like a teacher who embraces the principles of universal design for learning and project-based learning, Activities are planned for with everyone in mind. 
Like the people of the resistance, students use their individual strengths and uniqueness to generate solutions to real problems, which leads them to experience the content in a meaningful and powerful way. Educators need look no further than the newly updated National Ed Tech Plan of 2016 to find that Universal Design for Learning is a guiding factor for how to design educational experiences for students. You can check it out for yourself at bit.ly slash N-E-T-P 2016. I was raised to do one thing. But I've got nothing to fight for. The character FN2187, also known as Finn, played by John Boyega, is a stormtrooper who rebels against the First Order. He can't bring himself to comply with the orders of those in charge. It's just not in him to do what the generals and leaders of the First Order are telling him to do. Their orders don't jive with who he is and what he believes is right. For this reason, more than once, he is called a traitor by his former comrades in the First Order. Finn isn't unlike a student who acts out in class or rebels against the constrictions imposed by traditionally designed classrooms and schools. He is different, but trapped without a way to escape. Forced to be there, a student could feel much the same way. Finn pounces on the opportunity to escape when it is presented. Students who feel like traditional school environments aren't for them, however, don't get that option to escape. Students are told from an early age that they need to be good at school or else their future could be impacted. This sort of pressure is tough to bear, especially when school isn't necessarily designed for you. Nothing will stand in our way. I will finish what you started. As an educator, do you identify with Kylo Ren? Kylo Ren is torn between the dark side of the Force and the light. Often, contemporary educators will ask the question, if I present a lesson using UDL principles or from a project-based learning perspective, does that mean I might not get through all the standards? If so, could that mean my students might not pass the standardized test they are required to take? One can feel torn between using practices and methodologies that empower students to embrace a love of learning and those that drain the excitement out of the school experience. One can feel the rift growing inside them between using UDL and PBL techniques and cramming information into students so they can pass an artificial measure for learning, such as a standardized test. Will you make the same choice Kylo Ren did? But perhaps educators don't need to identify with Kylo Ren. Instead, perhaps they could identify with Rey. Rey is a nomadic scavenger who discovers that she is laden with the Force. Rey, without any training, experiences the Force awakening inside her. Throughout the movie, she discovers that she has the abilities derived from the Force. She never feels a pull to join the dark side. Educators, like Rey, don't need to feel torn. Instead, they can just do what comes natural to them and unlock their inner Jedi. Design experiences that are awesome, and the tests will take care of themselves. In fact, school districts, like Bartholomew in Indiana, have shown that embracing a UDL approach actually increases test scores. Like Luke before her, Rey steps out of her comfort zone and dives into an adventure which not only changes her life, but also saves millions of other lives. Ask yourself this, do you sympathize with the First Order, or do you want to be part of the Resistance? Will you embrace your inner Kylo Ren, or do you take a risk like Rey? Do you choose the path to the dark side, or the light? The choice is yours. The Force. It's calling to you. It seems like I've been traveling from star system to star system lately doing presentations on all sorts of things like core vocabulary and language development, universal design for learning, and designing awesome experiences for the 21st century learner. If you'd like to catch up with me in person, like so many of you did at ATIA, what a great time, I've listed out everywhere I'll be presenting on the AT Tipscast blog. Check it out at attipscast.com. Until next time, may all your interventions be inclusive, may all your strategies be supportive, and may the Force be with you, always.